Hello, my name is Mike and I'm here to show you my van today. The van that I live in and uh, yeah, what I call home. It's a 2014 Dodge Caravan and uh, I just got it about seven months ago and I've made it my home permanently. This is the uh, whole thing right here. You got a collapsible bed that kind of folds up into two couches. But I wanted to show you how the bed kind of lays flat. And this is kind of how I sleep in it at night. Seven feet long by 40 inches wide so it can comfortably seat two. So then I ran two um, strings of LED lights. They're uh, color changers, and they turn on the push of this button here. And this is the main power for the whole house. It's the, the heart of everything. So it's got 120 volt USBs and 12 volt for the lights. Yeah, it's just a lithium battery. It's a battery pack, so it's portable. You can kind of take this thing camping or do whatever. It's like a little generator that's silent. So why did you decide to go with that instead of just installing batteries in the back? Um, it was easier to start. Um, it's just a plug and play. So it's very, very simple to use. You don't have to do nothing. You just have to recharge it and then go. You don't have to do any wiring or, you know, solars or, or any hard wiring into the vehicle. The other thing is um, if I used batteries, um, they're heavy and they have to kind of stay in here unless I feel like being strong every day and carrying them into work which I do with this so every day I work full-time so for eight hours a day this thing charges when I kill it every day and especially in the winter months when I use my heated stuff it drains this battery pretty fast so I like to um, uh, bring it into work every day plug it in for six eight hours and then at the end of every day I'm back up to hundred percent Every day I leave work. So, and what do you run off of that? Um, I run my lights. I charge um, batteries, and my laptop can plug into the 120 here as well. I would recommend it to anybody because of its lightweight and ease of use. So, inside this big ass uh, sleeping bag, which is just huge and it's meant for really deep cold, um, I have a heated blanket inside of it, and it's just um, a three, low, medium, and high. And it plugs into the same Yeti again. And every night when it's cold, so for the last few months I've been using it, and it'll just get right hot, you know. Um, almost too hot actually, I gotta keep it on low. And it works so well that I've got rid of my heater, my little buddy heater like a month ago. But yeah, it does suck a lot of juice. Being a little, it's like a big element that you're laying on. So it just kills the battery. If you had it on high, it would drain this thing in a night, no problem. But if you have it on low, it won't. This speaker here, um, I got it a few months ago. It's, it looks like a really big speaker and it kind of is, it's really loud, but it also doubles as my desk. But when this thing is up in a couch, I pull this into me and I put my um, computer up here and I do my typing. Garbage can is made out of garbage, which I like because uh, I create them all the time with these things. Over here is the water jug that I fill every day at work. But there's, um, I think this is two and a half gallons and this is five. So, I mean, I got lots to, to last me. This is a uh, five day cooler, it's called. It's supposed to last five days with ice. And I think it's, that's pretty lucky if you get five days, you might get three to four. But yeah, so for about a buck a day of ice, I get a fridge. Um, I have a stove that is under this bed. And it's a double burner Coleman propane stove. And, um, I don't use it because I eat out a lot and um, I also need, don't need to cook a lot. So uh, I have used it more in the summer months when it was nicer out, but now that it's winter, I don't really want to get outside in the rain and the cold and cook on it. I'd just rather go and eat somewhere. Right here is a black blackout curtain that just runs across and it blacks me out every night. Just like this and like this. And it makes this place just pitch black and no one knows. So it's really nice because it's actually on a, a real curtain rod that my friend gave me. If you want to look up front, I don't know if there's much to show you up here, but dirty laundry, <clears throat> my hat, this is my gym bag. I, underneath, I have a um, booster thing because I find that sometimes I kill my battery when I'm not careful and not um, properly maintaining them. Nunchucks. And this is kind of the back of the shelf that is so there's dishes um kind of useless stuff actually i don't even need this thing i'll probably downsize that whole thing 
and then the back of everything i got a hanging fire extinguisher um one time i lit up fire when i was cooking it with the barbecue last summer and uh <clears throat> i almost burnt some stuff so i thought it would be safe to get one of these and keep it on on deck and then this whole top shelf is food and then the middle shelf is clothing this just happens to fit perfectly i built all this shelf and everything just happens to fit really perfect um i didn't mean for that because i didn't have any of this stuff uh, when i built the shelf i just kind of you know freehanded it all and everything just worked out perfect so i got lucky i keep a vacuum in here because i love vacuuming these paint sticks are very important to me because they hold in um this uh reflective window cover and that's that um it already is a friction fit but it can fall down sometimes in the in the wind and in the breeze so i just like to put these things in under the pillows and under all that down in here it's nice because this is where i store whatever i don't really use on a daily this is a flushing toilet that i've never actually had to use but it's there if i need it um propane can for the uh the stove that I, i'll get back to using this is my most important tool of my whole van it's a blower it's just a, a cordless battery powered dewalt blower that i use to spray the inside of the van like pretty much every day um it keeps it super super clean the reason that, that there's a big hole here is because this used to be a um a fold flat stow and go be bench a big back bench but i took took it out and i put it in storage so that i can store everything back here and it just creates a huge trunk that would have otherwise just been filled with useless seating you can kind of see there's like these piano hinges and they kind of keep everything you know moving and in motion like this whole bed transforms so i just do this every night unplug my stuff and turn it all off and the whole blanket um just rolls rolls up to the very very back the whole thing just lifts in the center and i pull up the foam and the foam and then it turns into a bed or a couch that's it you just turn these things and they hold the couch into the couch form then you got a full couch so it's great it's also the same couch on the back you can't really see right now but it faces backwards and so you can lift the tailgate and kind of put your feet out so underneath here is uh, just two shelves or two um little boxes of uh drawers and stuff it's kind of stuff that i don't really use all the time but when i need it it's there and actually behind that is the double burner coleman stove that i like to use in the summer i got four bags here and they're just cloth bags so one is socks underwear shirts and pants and they all my clothes fit on here the other thing about this shelf is um it's freestanding this shelf and this bed are two freestanding units they're they're separate but they're um they're not mounted to the van at all so i wanted to put no holes in the van except for a couple pin holes up here in the cloth but there's no holes drilled in the van at all so this van could be gutted out in like 10 minutes and I could put it back together in its original form. The reason why it's um, kind of left unfinished is because I wanted to live in here for a while um, and see if what I did like and what I didn't like. Um, there might have been some things that I didn't like. So, for instance, this shelf used to be longer here, but it got in my way, so I didn't like it. I chopped it off one night. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I did like it before I went ahead and invested in paint and the nice stuff and making it more uh, complete and finished rather than um, painting all of it, spending all that time and energy and resources and then finding out I didn't like it, start hacking it up. So that's a next project. I'm gonna kind of redesign it all. And I think I'm gonna put a sink here, a little running sink with a gray uh, tank and a fresh tank, probably just two of these. There's a few things that I want to add that I still haven't added. I'm gonna put solar up on the roof to charge this guy when I'm not at work and don't have that free access to electricity another thing is um this white lip here it doesn't look like much but it's about i don't know half of an inch and it keeps all this stuff up here nothing has ever fallen off yet so it, it seems like you know you take a fast turn you would see everything fly off and nothing's ever fallen off ever well one time <laughs> uh a big box of corn nuts Ten thousand corn nuts fell off one time but uh apart from that um nothing so yeah the reason why i live in a van <clears throat> i don't know it's pretty pretty easy for me because i want to um i've always kind of wanted to 
I knew at a young age that I was already designing little um, mini houses on paper and stuff when I was a teenager. First and foremost, um, I want to live in a van. And then there's the other reasons that are kind of the obvious ones. It's cheap. I don't pay rent. That's a huge plus for anybody. I mean, a thousand dollars in your pocket on average for a single person back in your pocket every month is huge. Because of my um, finances can stretch a lot more, I'm a lot happier and healthier. It's very, very freeing and liberating. Um, you know, I kind of just do what I want. Uh, it's nice because um, also I work full time so I can stay where work is. I do construction so it moves around and so my home will move around with it. Um, it's nice because I can just kind of roll out of bed and go to work every morning. That's what I do. So where everyone's kind of commuting and hustling to get in, I just roll over. So that's really, really nice. I think another thing is um, efficiency. I'm, I've always been keen on living efficiently and being efficient with, with many things. And that's why I chose the small van because I like to zip around all the time. This van is extremely stealth. It um, blends in with anything so I can park anywhere. And I believe it's important to me because I don't have to look for a spot every night and I don't have to um, think about it really. When I'm tired, I just pull over and go to bed. That's it. It's as simple as that. It fits right in. It's a minivan. I just look like, you know, any soccer mom, any soccer dad, I fit right in. And also, if you like doing stuff like napping, which I do, it's such a, such a huge thing. Like I can just go and pass out for two hours at any part of any day and it's fine. I don't have to get home first. Everyone's like, oh, I'm going to go home and take a nap. Well, you're on your way home. I'm already napping. So that's, that's big. Like I love the napping part. Um, I didn't realize I liked napping so much. Some of the challenges that I've faced, uh, I don't know if they're challenges, but more uh, daily chores. Like I like to, uh, get into a bathroom and brush my teeth every day so sometimes i have to like get up and find a bathroom just to go and wash up and brush my teeth so and use the bathroom also so um i guess that would be a bit of a challenge you gotta if you're using public bathrooms which i do you have to kind of you're limited by hours like closing closing time so that could be a challenge finding a bathroom but it, it really hasn't been for me i don't think there's really too many challenges i i it's pretty easy life is easy in, in the van I find like I think that I'm really cut out for it and it, it resonates with me so I, I don't find it too challenging in fact I've, I find it easier in a lot of ways there's a lot of things that really were simplified um, I own next to nothing so that's nice I don't have to worry about all my belongings and where they are and like, like with the condition they're in or anything I just I just got the few things I have and I go I do have to haul my own water. It's very, very easy for me because I work with water, like a garden hose all day, every day. So it's easy for me to get my water, but I do have to get it. And I have found myself out of water before just from being forgetful and neglecting the jugs and found myself thirsty. I bought a, a bottle of water once and I got a little bit pissed that I bought $3 for a little bit of water at a ESSO or something. Um, you also have to um, stay on top of your cleaning and your laundry and your dishes. Uh, you can't let your laundry pile up. You can't let anything pile up. You've got, I mean, I've only got limited things, but you can't, you know, go a week or two without doing your laundry. Otherwise you get, you know, it's a big pile of uh, stinky clothes in the corner of your van. So I'm doing my laundry all the time. Um, I don't mind it. A lot of people hate doing laundry, but I seem to like it. <laughs> it's easy to make messy, but it's easy to clean. Um, yes, I did reduce some of my possessions to get into here. Um, still, some of my stuff is in storage at friends' houses. Like, I have a couple of totes of tools. I have a couple of totes of um, miscellaneous things. But I think everything I own could still fit in this van. Everything. Alternative living, micro-dwelling, van lifing, whatever you want to call it. It all resonates with me highly. And I'm very, very comfortable in any small space, you know, which is why I was eager to get the smallest home possible. I wanted to be the most efficient I could be. Yeah, so it wasn't a big change for me. What's one thing that you would do differently with your current van life experience if you could? Like whether it's the build or, or maybe just some sort of preparation of some kind? Yes, um, I think I would prepare a little bit better with um, money. I jumped right in right away like I didn't prep at all I think within a, a month I bought a van and moved into it um, I would prep a little bit more save more money and do the things that I need and that being like um, maybe a running sink maybe a solar panel stuff that normal 
many homes have. Yeah, I think the best advice that I could give is uh, really just follow your heart. If you see yourself doing this and you want to do it, like I did, I just followed my heart. And rather than being influenced by the world around me saying, you know, maybe van life is a little bit weird, or it's a little bit shady, or it's just uh, not normal. Um, if that resonates with you, just do it. It's better to be authentic in the van than to be uh, inauthentic out of the van that you want to be in. So I think um, that would be some good advice. Just just get in there and do it. It's actually fun. Uh, that's another thing. Um, I'm having a lot of fun in it. I've you know gained so much health and happiness and growth personally because of it. You know I've um, in, I think I've been in here seven months, <clears throat> and in seven months I've grown more um, personally than I have in years and years pr previous. It can be lonely and or it is lonely it is lonely um but i think being alone is a really really good way to reflect on who you are i never really did that before so no, knowing now seven months in I, you know I, I learned a lot a, a lot more about myself have you ever had any problems with people kind of saying anything to you about being in a van or anything like that i know that those times will come and i'm probably going to get kicked out of a parking lot or a place here and there but that has yet to happen to me there was one time I got knocked on by a security guard but he was so nice and and it wasn't even because I was trying to stay there I actually just fell asleep in the driver's seat because I was um, doing a puzzle and I just dozed off for like five minutes and then this guy knocked he's like excuse me sir I have to just kindly ask you to leave and he was really nice sweet about it so I mean I don't even really consider that a a, no a, a knock kind of thing he was too nice so I, I would say I've had almost no bad experiences with um, people, you know, looking at me or judging me or anything like that. Maybe they do, but not forwardly to me. If you had to sum up, what would your personal philosophy on life be? I think it's good to uh, just be honest, be humble and be yourself. That's something that eludes a lot of people is just being authentic because the um, outer influence and the scrutiny that you get from um, the world around you can be very judging and damning and that can block you like who you are and I think that it's best to just uh, be authentic and that will just make you a happier person no matter what if you're a van lifer or if you're a hula hooper or whatever it is just be that that be that person that you want to be that's the best advice I can give and also just kind of like take it with a grain of salt be a little bit humble you know you're not gonna be the best and you're not the smartest you're not the fastest and the strongest just loosen up you know um, take things one day at a time and uh you know learn to uh accept being wrong it's another thing um if you can learn to be wrong you're winning in my opinion it's huge in conclusion i think i would say for me personally um i've grown a lot um my health and happiness has grown a lot um and i would recommend it to anyone who's even considering it even if it's a short time six months a year or longer I would really really recommend it it's it's added so much to my life and and I want to bring it with me and I'm gonna keep it for a while so like you couldn't even give me a house at this point or an apartment or anything even for free I wouldn't take it I would just get back out in my van like I don't, I don't want a house and I don't want to be stationary which is what um kind of the whole philosophy of van life is is uh, being able to move around so I see myself like in the next couple weeks or a month I'll be heading back east for a while and because of van life I can do that without any real hesitation or real thought you know I don't have to worry about lodging housing this and that travel I can just go stop when I want do what I want stay as long as I want and then come back Hey everybody, it's Forrest the Filmmaker. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Alternative Dwellings. If you want to see more, playlists are popping up right now where you can watch all of our archived episodes. Or if you want to see new ones, make sure to subscribe because they premiere at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time every single Monday. Hope to see you guys there.